Our next presenting company is Green Envirotech. Green Envirotech will be introduced by Ms. Andrea Catania. Ms. Catania. Good afternoon, everyone. I am very pleased to introduce you to Green Envirotech, a company that long ago in 2009, early 2010, I actually took public. And uh, Gary De Laurentiis, the CEO who couldn't be here today, introduced me to the amazing possibilities with converting trash to cash. And um, Mark Ganter has joined the company and is helping bring this company to new levels. And I hope, as re-engaged counsel to the company, to really help them move up the ladder and get listed on a national exchange. I think you're going to be very impressed, and I'm happy that you stayed after lunch to hear this presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, again, my name is Mark Ganter, and thank you so much for the intro. Um, I'm the co-founder of USWTE, uh, which really focuses on driving U.S. Uh, waste energy type technologies internationally uh, using, using U.S. technologies. I'm also the president of uh, Green Envirotech. Um, and really at its core, you know, what we do is we convert either scrap tire um, or plastic waste to a high-grade oil um, and carbon black yielding an EBITDA number of uh, 40 to 60 percent. Um, now if I can figure out how to uh, advance the slide. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, so really, what uh, what you need to understand is that the problem here, uh, there's really no words to describe it. The problem is staggering the amount of waste that, that exists on this planet and what's being produced on a year over year basis. Um, literally, our globe is drowning in plastic waste and, and even tires, um, even to the point where um, you know we can we don't know exactly what the impact of this might be, um, but studies have shown that microplastics in the oceans are having a direct effect on the the core bacteria um, that produce 10 percent of the oxygen we breathe. So you know how uh, if we don't clean up this uh, this problem and some of the other problems we have, um, eventually there will be impacts. Exactly what those are, I can't say, uh, but certainly uh, uh, cleaning up our planet has to be uh, um, one of the priorities as we as we move into the next century. Um, right now, there's 8.3 billion tons of plastic waste globally, and I'm not even going to try to get my arms around how massive that is. Um, recycling, it really isn't even close to enough. Um, we do recycling. Um, as many of you probably know, um, the majority of the recycling you do ends up in landfills or ends up um, trying to be shipped overseas. Um, plastics, uh, when they were originally developed, uh, were developed so well uh, that they simply don't go away. It takes over 400 years for plastic to decompose. Um, and really, there's been no sustainable solution, uh, partly because the economic model didn't, didn't really support uh, being able to process this, this waste. Um, and obviously, I think we can all agree that uh, there is significant environmental damage that's going on. And it, exactly uh, what that looks like in the future uh, um, is not going to be good. So to try to get your arms around the problem, um, um, each year, this, this world produces 300, uh, 350 million tons of waste plastic, and then another 1.5 billion tires per year. So to give you a little bit of an idea, one of our factories is about a $100 million investment. So if I were to uh, put up enough factories globally to just handle what's being produced on a yearly basis, um, I would have to put up 3,250 of these factories at a capital cost of $325 billion. So our solution, uh, we have a patent pending pyrolysis uh, as a gasification process in essence, where we break down the waste into its core components and then we produce valuable products. Uh, this is not incineration. Uh, the, the technology has been proven. Um, it is environmentally friendly. Uh, the plant operations themselves and the technology ha have been verified and confirmed by some of the largest EPC contractors in the world. Uh, and to date, $13 million has been invested. So what we basically produce is that, uh, that middle bottle there. Um, that's, that's our paralysis oil um, after the distillation. Um, so that's categorized as Alaska North Slope crude oil. Um, the, the oil on the left-hand side is a, a raw paralysis oil, which is akin to a bunker, bunker fuel. And that's what majority of what's been uh, de developed uh, and produced over the past three decades. 
Uh, we produce a carbon black when we're running a tire factory. Um, we produce electricity and scrap steel. Uh, but the bottom line here is what we do is we produce global commodities uh, that are all pre-sold. So, as I mentioned, our competition produces a bunker oil. Um, and what I want to make real clear here is we are not inventing the wheel. Uh, this technology, uh, the equipment, uh, a lot of this stuff has been in place for decades. Um, you could argue three decades and, and potentially even longer. What we've in essence done is um, our, our technology, we've refined this technology. We've learned how not to do it. And so we've designed it in a way that uh, produces a high quality product. Um, as I mentioned, this is categorized as Alaska North Slope, which is a higher grade oil than uh, Brent crude. Um, we are the only processor that we know of that has uh, an offtake agreement uh, with some of the largest oil companies in the world, uh, namely ConocoPhillips. Um, and we are far below EPA emission standards. Uh, we've got permits in California, and everybody knows California is the, the most difficult uh, state to get permits from. So as I mentioned, ConocoPhillips is on contract. Uh, we also have an LOI from a, a large refiner here on the East Coast. Um, and we are all in final negotiations on a, a take, and pay, take or pay agreement with them, um, which uh, offers a five-year contract to us, renewable, um, at uh, 20,000 barrels of oil per day. If we were to uh, actually deliver on that 20,000 barrels of oil per day, uh, that would require about a billion-dollar capital investment. And again, these are, these are global commodities. Um, and our other major product, of course, is, uh, is uh, carbon black. And carbon black, anything you see that has black in it, um, it has carbon. Um, our main um, supply, our main buyers of that would be the tire manufacturers and the rubber, uh, rubber factories. Um, but everything from HP printers to, uh, um, to light filaments, uh, you'll find black carbon in. So one of the unique aspects of what we're really proposing here is this factory from start to finish uh, really has a, a credit worthy component. Um, and, and in essence, what we're providing here for investors and for ourselves is downside protection. Uh, the operational risk has been virtually eliminated from these plants. So, and it's been eliminated by um, having our EPC contractors, in, in particular wood engineering uh, and BHP engineering, uh, they guarantee that when they put this factory up, uh, that this factory will produce the quality and quantity that it's designed to produce. Um, and we also will put an insurance wrap around that. Um, on the offtake side, ConocoPhillips and, and other offtakers that we already have on contract will buy everything that we create. And even if they don't, these are global commodities, so it's not, not difficult to sell oil, at least at market prices. Um, these plans can be developed with full credit risk, um, again, utilizing the third-party guarantees. So the only, the only other aspect there is the feedstock, and I think we can all agree the feedstock from a, pl a plastic waste and a tire standpoint is virtually unlimited in this scenario. So how do we make money? Um, you know, we're really looking at a, a, 30, a 60 percent or greater gross margin on all of our products that we produce. Um, our, our financial models do not, in, uh, do not take into account a tipping fee and, and being paid for feedstock, but in most cases we will be paid for taking the plastic and the tires. Um, unlimited feedstock and we have an EBITDA number between 40 and 60 percent. So looking at uh, five-year financials, and this is for a single plant. Um, you can see that uh, um, your base gets about a $50 million a year revenue um, with an EBITDA number of about $26 million per year um, going up over time. You'll notice that between the years 2021 and 2022, we have a, big, a bit of a jump in revenue. Um, so when you produce carbon black, um, after about a year or two years, you can get that certified, and then that price jumps from there. So that's why we have a jump in price in that year. Uh, management team, uh, we have you know, a couple of centuries of experience. Uh, we have built plants, numerous plants in various countries around the world. Um, our experience in how we develop the patent and the technology um, has to do with uh, really seeing what, uh, how, how things shouldn't have worked in these factories and re-engineering them so that they, they actually work well. Um, one of the things that, that I can kind of just share with you from a technology standpoint is one of the issues with most of these factories is they're gas fired and you can't control the heat. So our factories are, are really run on electricity, um, and that electricity um, allows for consistent heat. So our operational partners, Snyder Electric, which is the largest uh, electrical contractor in the world, provides us with a, a dashboard and, and management capabilities for at the valve level of each plant. Um, Wood Engineering provides us a performance uh, certification and verification, and BHP, which is a oil and gas specialty EPC contractor, uh, provides us with a performance guarantee on, on, the, on the factories. 
capital requirements. Uh, you know, there's, there's numerous things we're looking at from a capital standpoint, but because we've really eliminated most of the credit risk associated with each one of these plants, um, we really only need a million dollars uh, for pre-development and bond structuring. So what our plan is, is to um, bond uh, these factories and then take that to the institutional capital markets to, to uh, uh, get the rest of the money. So step three, acquiring the $100 million in debt and by over-collateralizing loan. Um, in return, uh, in this particular case, an investor will get an equity position of 10%. And so looking at the exit strategies that we've developed, uh, we would refinance after five years. Uh, that 10% equity uh, would give a $2 million a year profit uh, and profit distributions. Um, and that 10x return after five years. And the plant would guarantee a 5x return in those five years. Um, at the bottom, we launched a, an Opportunity Zone Fund uh, about a month ago, um, and that, that's another avenue where you can uh, invest in, in what we're doing in some of these plants. Um, and that's my presentation, and I, I hope you enjoy the conference, and uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Be sure to sign up for the one-on-one. -on -one.